Okay, welcome to my new show, Kevin Maley Super Review. See, I get a lot of stuff, and I don't make enough time to look at all of it, so this is my new series where I'm just going to grab things and start looking at stuff. Here we go. So if you'll remember, in an earlier episode of the Atomic Comic Pile, I got the Ash Can edition of Elvira in Monsterland. Well, I just went and got my pull service from the comic store, and the first issue has been released. Now, it is the same as the ash can, except this has a thicker cover. And you've got a little bit of difference here. But the ash can, it ends right here and then goes into a little bit of a history of what this comic is about. Well, in the real comic, that's only the halfway point. Let me get there, hang on a second. Okay, so. Right there, the halfway point. Now we got the second half of the comic. Boom, right here on the first page, you've got Blackula, but uh, <laughs> Elvira calls him the king of cartoons. Because you know what? He does look like him from Pee Wee's Playhouse. Now, this comic is really funny. So Vlad is still going around. He's collecting the other Draculas. I love this art. Take a look at this. Boom, not only do you have Bram Stoker's Dracula, but you got Keanu Reeves, see? He says, whoa, and he's calling people dude. Count Von Count, everyone turns into Muppets. Check out the inside of his cloak. Look at this, they're in Muppet Land, Big Bird shows up and scares uh, Puppet Vlad away. Boom, then it ends, they, uh, Elvira jumps into a black and white movie. Take a look, you recognize this scene? I did right away, I knew what was coming up. Bam! Frankenstein. Frankenstein's monster. That's the setup for issue number two. All the Frankensteins. I'm telling you, I'm loving this comic, but that's not what this video is about. With this video, oh, check out this. Uh, it's a photo cover with the real uh, Elvira. Anyways, no, what this video is about, something else I picked up at the comic store while I was there. Star Wars Exploring Tatooine, an illustrated guide. It's a hardcover book. It just looks awesome. So I snagged it and let's see what's inside. First of all, I, to me, Star Wars is Tatooine. I know a lot of people complain, why are we always going back to Tatooine? On uh, The Mandalorian, um, the, 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 the newer movies, what did they go to? I, I can't even remember now, that was Jakku, right? Um, the Obi-Wan series, the Boba Fett, takes place in tat. I'm telling you, for me, Star Wars is Tatooine. I love Tatooine. Check it out, a map, a map. Mos Espa, so this is from um, uh, The Phantom Menace, of course. Zeldrick Draw, I'm not familiar with that. Ben Kenobi's home. Um, as you can see, that is, uh, that, that looks like the original Ben Kenobi home before they changed it for the special edition. The Jundlin Wastes, the Dune Sea, there's Jabba's Palace, Great Pit of Carcoon, what uh, Boba Fett fell into, Mos Eisley, Anchorhead, Big Stark later, the actual star of Star Wars, and the Lars Homestead where Luke lived. Look. This is where they all are, right? I actually have a, an atlas of Star Wars hardcover book, and it's, uh, it shows where all of these areas are, plus more, and uh, you can shows how to get to each of them. But this is nice. This is nice. Look, more of this. The Jun Lin Wei, so it tells you all about it. Ezra, so, uh, you know, I haven't watched that cartoon, so I'm not familiar with the character, but they're going to bring the live-action version of him out in uh, the new Ahsoka show, I believe. So I'll become familiar. Here we go. Now, that's the special edition version of... Uh... No, you know what? It's not. Ah, forget me. I'm, I'm getting confused. Darth Maul and Obi-Wan on Tatooine. Must have been in one of the cartoons. Check it out. So that's where Luke was when he was looking for R2 and he gets ambushed by the Sand People, Tusken Raiders, and rescued by Ben. It was in the Jundlin Wastes. Ah, here we go, the Lars homestead. Not Lars from Metallica. This is Owen and Baru Lars. Check this out. 
pretty cool the moisture evaporate there they are as, as young people look ray bearing the lightsabers out there i'm sure you know all about my failed trip to the actual location in tunisia but we won't reiterate that here look r5d4 they've really expanded on his character in the mandalorian which uh, i am a fan of that story choice here we go kenobi's home that is very nice love it oh check it out young boba fett against luke Obi-Wan's home is also the site of a fierce fight between Luke Skywalker and Boba Fett. Oh, I, you know what? I gotta read this book. I wonder what this is from. Even if it's from a cartoon, I gotta watch that. Maybe it's from a comic book. Dr. Aphra, that's a comic character. Hmm. Did you watch the Obi-Wan series? Loved it. Anchorhead and Tashi Station. Wasn't it great in The Mandalorian when when uh, Mando, or was it, no, it was Boba Fett, right? He went to Tashi Station and it had Fixer and Cammy there five years after Return of the Jedi. It's great. T-16 Skyhopper. Uh, um, you know, the scenes that were originally gonna be in Star Wars, they included them in the radio show, which is nice. The Skyhopper uh, threading the, the stone needle and all that. It's really cool. Voiced by Mark Hamill himself for those scenes. And they had Biggs in that radio show. Mo Sisley, here we go, here we go. Look at that, that's Cantina. This is the, uh, this is the spaceship that was in, it's, it's a replica of um, what they used in, um, 2001 Space Odyssey. Ronto. So here's special edition stuff. You know who's in the costume here of this stormtrooper that's that gets uh, mind tricked by Obi Wan? You know the these aren't the droids we're looking for and all that. That is the actor Mark Forrest who played Fixer in Tashi Station, in the deleted scenes. You guys know this stuff, right? Now, of course you don't, but now you do. Chalman's Cantina. Uh, Chalman is not the name of the bartender. The name of the bartender is Woo Her. And of course, in the holiday special, it was uh, um, Akmina, played by B. Arthur. Uh, Chalman, I guess, is the owner. I have a model of the cantina with all the little aliens and droids and stuff. I have to assemble and paint that one day. Mm. You know, I mentioned in the last video that I, I needed to, the, the, the video, um, Major Inapac, the Space Ace. Look, Spaceport, most likely Spaceport. This is Docking Bay 94. Hey, Jabba. <laughs> Anyways, I was saying that I need to assemble that telescope. I did. I assembled it over the weekend. My mom asked me to for Mother's Day. I, I assembled it. It's, uh, it's not easy to use. It is a Galileo refracting telescope, which is not um, a typical telescope. It's not the type of telescope I've ever used before. So it's, uh, it's going to be difficult for her to use. I'm going to have to show her how to use it. But anyways... The Dune Sea. Check it out. Boba Fett's Slave One ship parked at Jabba's Palace. I had the Slave One ship toy when I was a kid. Hey, there he is on this throne with his girlfriend, played by uh, Ming-Na Wen. And that dude, I know he's from a cartoon, but he was pretty cool in the live action Boba Fett show. It's a great book. I love this. Help, we're over here. Stop, please help. Silverleg. I like when he got his red arm too. Very nice. Look, it's the original Max Rebo band. They don't have that, that, the goofy new characters that, that scream right in the camera with the saliva strands swinging back and forth inside their mouth. Grody to the max. Where's Salacious Crumb? 
You know, when Return of the Jedi came out, I had kind of moved on to G.I. Joe toys, so I stopped getting Star Wars toys, but I did get this Lando in disguise and this Leia in disguise because with the disguises on, I felt that I was getting two action figures in one with each. Kind of dumb because um, they weren't fun to play with, but when my friend Mark brought over his Ewok treehouse playset and all the Ewoks and stuff, I could not get enough of it. And he had Jabba and he had the Max Rebo band and I was like, man, these figures are really actually cool. I, I wish I get these. And I would borrow them from him all the time because those were really fun to play with. I love the Ewok toys. Darth Vader in Jabba's palace. You know what? I think I'm missing out on some cool Star Wars stuff that I'm not aware of where these come from. Asajj Ventress. This is another cartoon character. I love the Jawa Sandcrawler scenes in uh, the first season of The Mandalorian. So great. There's that guy that was wearing Boba Fett's armor. I'm glad he got it back from him. Mos Pelgo. That was that town. Get this off my screen. Zeldrick Draw. Oh, that's where they landed. Huh. Huh. Remember that scene in the trailer when um, Qui-Gon... I think he leaps back up into the ship as it's taken off and they cut the scene where Darth Maul jumps up to chase him. Anyways, he's like laying in the ship and he gets up and he says something. He says, tell them to take up. I could never figure out what he was saying. It was He was saying, T tell them to take off or something like that. I don't know. It was co completely indecipherable. You remember that. Mos Espa. Here we go. Sebulba. Bantha Poodoo. Wado's junk, junk Shop. I did enjoy The Phantom Menace when it came out. I, I saw it in its first showing, midnight showing. I read the novel a week before the movie came out. Um, I went back and watched the movie in the theater a couple of times that opening weekend. Really did like it. Love Darth Maul, love the pod races. This is great. There he is. So we got all the different drivers. Boy, they're really dwelling on this pod race, but that's okay. Most Espa circuit. Check this out, the whole thing. As a child, Luke Skywalker flies through Beggar's Canyon in his Skyhopper, unknowingly following in his father's engine trail. So, wow, Beggar's Canyon is in... Oh! Is that where the Tusken Raiders are? The Canyon Dune turn. I'm going to have to give this book a little bit more attention and read more of it. Well, I like that. I like that. It's like poetry. It rhymes. I, I guess that's one page. Okay. Tuscan Camp. Oh, this is from the uh, Boba Fett show. I like that show, too. I just wish we had a young Boba Fett in his prime, crossing paths with Dengar and Forlom and Zuckus and all those dudes, you know? Instead of it just being the generic uh, Din Djarin Mando show, I'm going to stop complaining. Everybody loves that show. It's great. So that's the end of the book. So check it out. Pretty cool. Newer image, older image. Love it. Okay. Let me show you a few more things. I recently went on my first cruise and I got engaged on the cruise. But let me show you something. So, on the cruise, we went to the Bahamas. 
here's a souvenir I got, a maraca that says the Bahamas. Why did I get this? Because when I was a kid growing up, we had two maracas in the house that both said Bahamas on it. And uh, I assume, and these were my parents' maracas. Um, when I went to the Bahamas and I saw this maraca, it reminded me of those uh, long forgotten maracas. So uh, they must have went to the Bahamas too and, and got the same thing as souvenirs. So now I got one too, but I got something else. I got a drum that says the Bahamas. Why'd I get this? Well, the first time I went and uh, was hired to professionally sing, when I would show up to rehearsals, they had one of these little drums sitting around and I'd always play it. I thought it was fun. And when I saw this handmade drum there that says the Bahamas on it, and they only wanted a couple dollars for it, boom, it's mine. I got another noisemaker. Look, it's the drum from Karate Kid 3, but it says the Bahamas and it has this generic bootleg Spider-Man on it. Check it out. <laughs> Spider-Man on the spider, Spider-Man, yeah. The bah Bahamian spider, Spider-Man. He's on the back too, but it doesn't say Bahamas back there. So we'll look at the front. Okay, what else did I get? This Carnival Cruise happens to be their 50th anniversary. So I got this pin commemorating it. Check it out. I ran the marathon at Space Coast's 50th anniversary marathon. I saw the Monkees and Gordon Lightfoot both on their 50th anniversary tour. And my first cruise happens to be on Carnival Cruise's 50th anniversary. And in 11 months, I'll be 50. So I took a bunch of pictures. I took 400 pictures and videos, in fact. Uh, but uh, I also, there were professional photographers everywhere taking our photos and I bought all of them from them and not only did I get them and put them in a special uh, um, uh, photo album <laughs> I couldn't remember the words um, I also got them put on a, a USB for me and this is a USB port but no, not a port it's a USB drive a thumb drive thumb drive um, that's what it is thumb drive as the ship how cool is that Carnival. Ooh. Also, I collect magnets. So I got this cool refrigerator magnet. The Bahamas, all the islands, got pirates. Reminds me of my sunken treasure comic. Um, oh, speaking of which, I uh, uh, when I did my Trader Brandon episode, I talked about all this, the stuff I was inspired to, to, to put one day into my new sunken treasure comic. Well, in the Bahamas, I went snorkeling through the coral reefs. And boy, it, it, it gave me a lot more ideas of, um, of things that I actually did in the old Stunken Treasure comic and forgot about. All this snorkeling, the, the corals, the pirate stuff. Everything was about pirates. And uh, the Bahamas were full of this stuff. So I'm, I'm really jazzed about making that comic. I, I need to get on it. And one last thing. They gave my fiance this... Uh, souvenir uh, for free, threw it in with some gifts and she gave it to me. It is a uh, little keychain surfboard, says Nassau, the Bahamas, where they went. Now, when I saw Point Break in the theater in 1991, I decided right then and there, one day I would have to become a skydiving surfer. I'm not, I'm not going to become a bank robber or, and I'm not going to dress as a president or an ex-president, but what was it, last year? Last year I went skydiving. Kirk Hammett of Metallica, he took up surfing when he turned 50. I turned 50 next year. Um, we're gonna get married in Hawaii. And uh, while I'm there, I'm gonna go surfing. I'm telling you right now. So there we go. Until next time.